Everyone has an opinion on the Intel Pentium 4. You either love it or you hate it. It is certainly an obsolete platform these days, but we will resurrect it and play some of those classic MS-DOS games. Back in the day, the Pentium 4 had heavy competition from AMD. Performance was always a hot topic in the forums. Playing older games, well, the performance is outstanding. In fact, we're running here Tomb Raider and System Shock at 640x480 with silky smooth frame rates. In the comments, you wanted me to check out a chipset from SIS. We have a motherboard from AOPEN. It is the MX46 533GN. The mainboard has the SIS 651 and 962L chipsets. The SIS chipset is quite sought after for specific reasons. Most mainboards have a universal AGP slot. That means you can use some of those precious 3DFX Voodoo cards in a fairly fast machine with a decent processor. We have an AGP slot, three PCI slots. There are two DDR memory slots, two ID ports, as well as a floppy port and the usual ports at the back, PS2, USB, serial, parallel. It has integrated graphics. We get ethernet and also onboard audio. The processor I'm using for this project is the Intel Pentium 4 running at 2.8 gigahertz. It has the North wood core and a front side bus of 533 megahertz. So a fairly decent processor for Windows 98 and MS-DOS. One of the challenges when working with the Intel Pentium 4 and the Socket 478 is finding a decent CPU cooler. Unlike with Socket 754 and 939 on the AMD platform, you can buy a modern Ryzen CPU cooler and off you go. With the Socket 478, you probably have to look uh, at the used market. This one is nice, it's got uh, a nice copper core, so has no issues keeping the 2.8 GHz Pentium 4 under control. For RAM, we're using a DDR400 module, 256 megabytes of capacity. That's quite on the high side. For DOS, we want to have uh, less, less is more. Ideally, something with 16 or 32 megabytes. And some games will have issues with this much RAM, but there are software workarounds. There are many choices for the graphics card. We're going with a video card from NVIDIA today. It is nothing other than the famous or infamous GeForce FX 5200. It is okay for early Windows 98 games, but will struggle once you crank up resolution, detail levels, or play something more modern. DOS compatibility is also pretty decent, and we have a nice selection of outputs, VGA, DVI, as well as uh, composite out and S-video out. For storage, we're using, once again, the StarTech ID to SATA converter, which works really well. It hasn't let me down in any of my projects yet. And we're using a modern SSD. This one has 32 gigabytes, mostly because it formats and partitions really quickly, but you can use something 60 or 120 gigabytes as well. If you're using a larger SSD, then you will run into some issues. Windows 98 has a uh, partition limit of 120 gigabytes so stay uh, try to stay under that threshold we will definitely need a cd-rom firstly it makes installing the operating system much easier but many dos games were shipped on cd especially the late era games the two games we're going to test today tomb raider and system shock at 640x480 both of these are shipped on cd-rom so it is Basically a must-have in a retro PC. And for sound, we are once again using one of my favorite sound cards. It is the Sound Blaster Live. And under Windows, this is a fantastic sound card. But what about DOS compatibility, especially using a SIS chipset? I was really impressed that you can still download the BIOS, the drivers, and the manual from the AOPEN website. The latest BIOS version is 109 from 2003, so that's what we're using. I'm loading the BIOS defaults, change the boot order, so we're booting off the CD first, and then I disable any onboard resources that we don't need, like the onboard sound, the LAN, serial, parallel, floppy, all of that stuff. We are booting from the Windows 98 SE CD-ROM. You can get a copy from WinWorld. I'll put a link to all the resources down below in the video description. 
I've used the SSD in a previous project, so it was already formatted. So we can do a quick format to save a little bit of time. I then turn off the PC and connect the SSD to a modern computer with a USB to SATA adapter. Copy the Windows 98 installation files, the drivers, the games, the benchmarks. I copy everything on here and that just gets me started a lot easier. Then we run the Windows 98 setup directly from the SSD, makes it fast and smooth. It also means later if the Windows uh, looks for some of the setup files, it doesn't ask for the disk anymore, it will find them directly on the SSD. And then we ran into an issue twice, the setup would freeze at certain points during the installation process. Now, I've worked with a lot of hardware, so I had an idea of what's going on, and it's a small detail. Remember that I disabled a few onboard resources, including the floppy and the floppy controller, and on most mainboards, during the Windows 98 installation, it will seek the floppy drive. Now, if it doesn't find it, it will time out after a few minutes, and then the installation will continue. But on this mainboard, that didn't happen, it just froze, and it wouldn't come back to life. So the quick fix, I connected a floppy drive to the machine, uh, enabled the A floppy drive and the floppy controller, and now the setup would install smoothly. The latest chipset drivers are version 1.21, and that installed everything to do with the main board. The Nvidia drivers are next. We're using version 56.64. I had really good experiences with the GeForce FX and this driver version. For the Sound Blaster Live drivers, we have an update. Big shout out to Joseph Joestar from the Vogons forums. He put together a driver package and it's a mix of drivers from the Sound Blaster Live installation disks as well as the Audig 2 ZS installation disks. And I just renamed things a little bit to make it really uh, easy to use. It's called version 2.1 now, link down below in the video description and it sets you up with all the drivers, a bunch of utilities from Creative as well as the important DOS drivers. Here we are on the desktop running at 1600 by 1200 and I'm looking in device manager to see what resources got allocated to the Sound Blaster Live and yeah, not that great. We have DMA3 and the MIDI port is set to 300. However, we can just change the resources in the device manager. This is because Windows 98 is a plug and play operating system. You don't have to configure it in the BIOS. You can just do it in the device manager. Setting up MS-DOS mode can be quite challenging if you're not familiar with editing config sys and auto exec batch files. So I put together this project. I coined it MS-DOS mode super easy. You put a driver's folder on the C drive and a shortcut on the desktop, run the shortcut, the machine will shut down or reboot into MS-DOS mode and you get a nice menu where you can choose memory options and if you want a CD-ROM and a mouse. Unfortunately, booting into DOS, we're getting more issues. I can see an error to do with EMS and also the USB mouse is not working. In the BIOS, there was no option for USB mouse support. I believe that is the reason. The workaround is to use a USB mouse that supports the PS2 protocol and then you can use one of these USB to PS2 adapters. But it's not ideal because uh, not too many uh, USB mice still support the PS2 standard. DOS performance is excellent. PC Player Benchmark, we're getting almost 400 and in Quake almost 300 FPS. At 640 by 480 we're getting 81 in PC player benchmark and 47.4 in Quake, but running fast vid, we can improve that. Quake now runs at 135 FPS. We're getting a lot of flickering, however, this was not visible in Tomb Raider and System Shock. I played some Doom and Doom 2, and yeah, things are looking pretty decent. We're getting digital sound effects. And for the music, you can choose FM or General MIDI. General MIDI sounds much nicer on the Sound Blaster Live. But after a short while, the games crash to DOS with a low tick is less than game tick. And I googled that error message. It has something to do with the game engine running out of sync. So yeah, we're really strange. I've never seen anything like it. Tomb Raider, on the other hand, seems to be running perfectly fine. Press F1 to toggle from the 320 by 200 to 640 by 480. The game looks 
much sharper now. The frame rate is not that high. I guess it's 30 FPS. And also I'm seeing a lot of distortion with the 3D graphics. Um, if you have some input about that, I'm really curious to hear what's going on. Um, maybe that's just how the engine got programmed because I've seen the same on, a, on another machine. We are getting working audio. Remember the Sound Blaster Live will give you a Sound Blaster 16 under DOS, so that worked well and no crashes in Tomb Raider. Here we have System Shock also running very smooth at 640 by 480. You need to go into the options and crank up the resolution. Again, for the sound effects, works perfectly fine with the Sound Blaster 16 option. And for music, you can choose either FM or General MIDI, with General MIDI once again sounding much nicer. However, after playing the game for a little bit, at some point the game will freeze, and that happened several times. Now, I played the game later one more time without audio, so basically no sound, which is a really boring experience, but it didn't, it didn't freeze at all, so I believe this has to do with the Sound Blaster Live. So maybe there's some incompatibility between the Sound Blaster Live and the SIS chipset. I got a lot of comments about testing a new project, a Sound Blaster emulator, which runs under MS-DOS. And yeah, so gave it a shot. Unfortunately, on the machines I've tried so far, it hasn't really worked out for me. The first issue is it does support the Sound Blaster Live, but I found it while the driver initializes. I never get any audio out of the Sound Blaster Live. However, it does work with the Sound Blaster Audigy. So, of course, I tried System Shock again. Unfortunately, right at the beginning, the game crashes immediately and I'm not sure if it has to do with the driver, a compatibility issue with the machine, or maybe with the, the memory manager. We can't use the Microsoft EMM386 for this project, we have to use uh, a driver from FreeDOS and in the past I found uh, drivers from FreeDOS to not be as compatible with games compared to the one from Microsoft. This Sound Blaster emulator also supports integrated sound so I went back into the BIOS, turned on the onboard audio. My hopes were high but unfortunately the driver tells me it can't detect a sound device. So guys, there's lots to talk about. I ran into quite a few issues. So we had the freezing Windows installation because of the floppy drive not being connected, then no USB mouse support, and we had a lot of issues with the audio and also games crashing, Doom and System Shock. So yeah, and this is where things get tricky because this is really my first time checking out the Pending 4 with an SIS chipset under DOS. So it's too early to jump to conclusions. It could be the chipset, it could be maybe this particular motherboard and the BIOS implementation, so more testing is needed. But of course, if you're out there and you have a Pentium 4 with a SIS chipset, please share your opinions. And also, under Windows 98, I didn't encounter any issues, but I also didn't do too much testing, and most people will uh, look for one of these boards for Windows 98 because of the universal HP interface, which means you can use a Voodoo 3 with a very fast machine. In terms of performance, the Pentium 4, maybe back in the day, was not the fastest platform, but for uh, vintage and old DOS games, plenty of power, running games at 640 by 480 and higher, uh, it will run them with ease, as you've seen in the videos. The issue is with older games, anything that's speed sensitive, you will struggle to run in, running them well on a Pentium 4. And also a lot of these sound cards use emulation to uh, emulate FM audio and they will not work properly once disabling the CPU cache because then the CPU becomes too slow and can't handle running the game and the emulation at the same time. So this was one of these projects where I'm leaving with more questions than answers and I'm really eager to hear uh, from you, from the community, you always bring something really interesting to the table and I do pay attention. So going forward, I will do more retro videos. I don't wanna say I'm done with modern stuff, but um, yeah, I'm enjoying old computers again. So uh, hopefully <laughs> you enjoy me making videos as well. And yeah, let's leave it at that. So looking forward to your comments and 
please make sure you subscribed and you've turned on all the notifications. I actually went through my subscriber list recently and I, I did that and now I'm getting all the notifications. So have a look at that. It means a lot to me if you watch my videos. And that's it. I will put links to all the resources down below in the video because uh, one reason why I do these videos is to help you guys. I want more people to get started with DOS gaming. There are so many videos about home computers and arcade and emulation, but uh, DOS gaming is what I'm passionate about and DOS games are really awesome. And yeah, Windows 98 games as well. Old games in general, I'm really passionate. Uh, PC gaming, old PC games basically. So yeah, thanks for watching and I shall see you soon in another one.